It's time for the non-sporting group. Please welcome from Clinton, New Jersey, Mrs. Elaine J. Lessig. Our steward for the non-sporting group this evening is AKC board, Mr. Lee Arnold. May we have the non-sporting group, please? Well, the parade has begun as they work their way here into the ring. 21 dogs in the non-sporting group, a variety of sizes, shapes, coat types. Originally in America, groups were divided just between sporting and non-sporting groups. Uh, and then as they, we brought more dogs in, we evolved into the seven groups that we have today. And in Europe and the other MCI countries, you have 10 groups. Right. So in the UK and the USA, we get up quite lightly. <laughs> this is a competitive group. Very, always is. Mrs. Lessig from New Jersey. She's a Cavalier breeder herself. Mm -hmm. She's, uh, she's. I was talking to her earlier, and she's she's really looking forward to this group. Mm -hmm. She's obviously giving them all a very very thorough look. Most of these breeds I'm familiar with, Gina, but the, um, you're going to have to help me out a little bit later on American Eskimos, yes. because that's a breed that we've yet <laughs> to discover in the UK. No problem. I got it covered. Mm -hmm. Andrew, will you brush up a little bit as you get ready to kind of oversee a group? Will you kind of brush up a little bit on what you're well, looking every, for? Well, every, every breed is judged ag against a written description of, of the, um, the, the blueprint of the breed, which we refer to as the breed standards. And um, Dalmatian. The picturesque Dalmatian slick white coat, which is decorated with jet black or liver brown spots, looks like no other breed. While Dalmatians have been used as dogs of war, sentinels, draft dogs, shepherds, sporting dogs, and stage performers, they are best known as coach dogs and firehouse mascots. This is Dalmatian number 11. So this is Dalmatian Odie being shown by Michael Scott, a professional handler. Okay, let's take him right around, please. Dalmatian is one of those breeds bred with great endurance and stamina, high energy breed. Yeah, the fire station dog. Do you recognize this black dog? I don't, so tell me. You Standard Poodle. Undoubtedly, Poodles originated as water retrievers. They come in three sizes, and the large or standard Poodle gained special fame as a water worker. Poodles have enjoyed universal esteem, which is attested by their variation in size and color. They possess innate intelligence, and their ability to learn is exceptional. This is Standard Poodle number 15. We sat here last year, Gina. He had a different handler. Is he in the do world challenge? Do you remember him winning the Yukonuba World yes, Challenge? Yes, now I do. Thank you very much. Then he went on to win Best in Show at Crufts. He's now living in Peru. And, and he's, he's here in Florida. And he's, <laughs> and he's back in Florida. The, 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 right the venue for his great victory last year. And he's, I watched Standard Poodles uh, in, in the breed ring earlier. Very competitive. And it was a very competitive breed today. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. There were some great standards. And, uh, and Ricky... Ricky came back to Orlando and uh, pulled off the breed under Kathleen Colbert. Sholo its Quintly. The Sholo is one of the world's oldest and rarest breeds. In its native Mexico, it is still considered to be a healer in remote villages. Today, this breed serves as a guard and companion. 
They come in toy, miniature, and standard sizes and can be hairless or coated. Typical Sholo temperament is calm, tranquil, aloof, and attentive. They make excellent companion dogs with moderate exercise and grooming needs. This is Sholo at Squint Lee, number 17. Thank you, ma'am. Right on around for me, This please. is Armani, the top-winning Sholo of all time and the number five non-sporting dog currently. Fascinating hairless breed, and you have three sizes, yeah? Correct. All shown together. Correct. May I please see his bite and his tongue? Thank you, and congratulations on your win today. Thank you, sir. Halfway down the back, please. Chinese Sharpei. The Chinese Sharpei is an ancient breed that has existed for centuries in the southern provinces of China. Sharpei translates roughly into sandpaper-like coat, a unique coat in the dog world, along with the hippopotamus muzzle. They possess Thank loose skin right and wrinkles over me, the please. head, neck, and withers. Sharpei are regal and lordly while being extremely devoted to their family. This is Chinese Sharpei number 33. Dog was winner's dog and the grand Futurity winner in 2014 at its national specialty. Congratulations on your win today. Finnish Spitz. Finnish Spitz, which present a fox-like appearance, have long been used to hunt small game and birds. Though they are primarily house dogs and faithful companions, this red gold dog is the national dog of Finland, where they still work as national bark pointers. They direct hunters to the location of tree game with a distinctive ringing bark or yodel and point at the game as the hunter approaches. This is Finnish Spitz, number nine. Interestingly, Gina, you probably wouldn't have known this, but this Finnish Spitz was actually bred in the UK. No. This is Kuniakas Wizbang, who was actually in 2011 the top UK puppy in the breed. So what is Puppy of the Year? We don't have Puppy of the Year. No, no, he's the top winning oh, fin Finnish Spitz over, over, you know, from the time he was six months until he was 12 months. Got it. Congratulations on a lovely day. Keys Hound. The Keys Hound, the national dog of Holland, is a hardy breed possessing a double coat and fox-like expression. A unique characteristic of this breed are spectacle-like markings that help give them in an inquisitive ex expression. A sensible okay, watchdog and an that. ideal family companion, Keyshound serve as barge dogs on small vessels that were found in great numbers on the Rhine River. This is Keyshound number 27. This is Cubit, and Cubit is having quite the year. Yes, seven best in shows, eight best in specialty shows. He is the best of breed winner in his national specialty, the number one dog in the breed, and a top five non-sporting dog. And this, this is one of many breeds where the, the British breeders, you know, in recent years have benefited from American imports. Um, we've seen some very significant Kazons coming into the UK that, that have, have done very well in the ring and then come on to produce great, into the, you know, the, 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 the cooperation between breeders increases all the time. Congratulations on a nice day. May you, would you please show me his bite and his coat? Chow Chow. Chow Chows Thank were first you. bred in northern China more than 2,000 years ago to hunt, herd, and protect the home. They are serious, dignified, and proud. Because of their background as one of hard work and little fun with humans, they can seem aloof. The breed comes in two coat types, rough Great. and smooth. Yeah, Halfway, the blue-black tongue is one of the Chow's most distinguishing features. This is Chow Chow number five. This is Pilot, Michael Brantley, the handler. This is the number one Chow in 2014. He's had two all breed best in shows, nine group firsts. Very distinctive movement on the Chow Chows, Gina. Always remember that and they move right with a rather a stilted rear action because they don't have as much angulation behind as a lot of our more generic breeds. And that very distinctive skull that gives them that sort of leonine expression. Tibetan Terrier. Bred to be Great. companions, Tibetan Terriers are happy, outgoing dogs who were considered family members in their native Tibet. Tibetan Terriers are actually not Terriers, 
They are called by that name because of their size and because Western countries preferred it to their Tibetan names of Luckbringer and Holy Dog. Their coat, which is long and shaggy, may be straight or wavy and of any color. TTs are extremely agile and usually rather quiet. This is Tibetan Terrier number 11. So this is Axel, a multiple group winning Tibetan Terrier. He's number three, all breed, number two in his breed. Thank you, sir. Right on around for me, please. You know, it's hard to believe when you actually look at the two breeds today that when they first came into the UK, the Tibetan Terrier and the Lhasa Apso were all basically lumped into one because they've developed quite in quite different directions. Have a day. Yeah. Here you go. Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu have been favorites with the Japanese for centuries. They are considered to be the smallest and oldest of Japan's dogs. Their keen <laughs> senses and ability to maneuver through steep hills and mountain slopes have repeatedly shown the Shiba to be a superb hunting dog. This okay, is Shiba Inu, number 85. Sherry Sulo is the owner-handler of Kuma. One of the Japanese breeds with a very individual character, the Shiba Inu, Thanks and so a very, much. very exquisite expression. I love their faces. Mm. They just, when, when they do have that one wonderfully satin shaped eye, there's nothing like a, mm -hmm. the, that classic Shiba expression. Congratulations on your win. Miniature Poodle. Sweetie. The Miniature Poodle has the same fine qualities of the standard Poodle. They are used for sending and digging up truffle an edible fungus considered to be a great delicacy. The unique coat of the poodle consists of a profuse top coat, wiry in texture, Thank and composed of thick, close curls. The undercoat is woolly and warm. This is the miniature poodle, number 11. We've been talking about top-ranked dogs here throughout the night. This is the number one miniature poodle here in 2014. Of course, in the States, just like the UK, you have three sizes of poodle. Mm -hmm. Europe and the other FCI countries, they actually have four. What's the fourth? They have a toy, a dwarf, a miniature, That's and a standard, with the dwarf being some way between the toy and the mini. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Kazosaka, owner and handler of this dog. Very, very successful. Very famous. Very yes. successful yes. handler of poodles. Handler poodles. Poodle. Congratulations, sir. How are you doing? American Eskimo Dog. The American Eskimo Dog is one of the Nordic breeds and is nicknamed the Eski. Their sparkling white coat has great crowd appeal, okay, which made them extremely down. popular for use in dog acts in circuses. A loving companion, the Eski possesses innate intelligence, unsurpassed agility, and is highly trainable. This is American Eskimo Dog number 19. Well, if you like watching movies, in particular Turner Classic movies, Inuk is your companion. His owner says, loves watching those old classics together. <laughs> Both a Canadian and American champion, 14 Albreed Best in Shows. Congratulations on a lovely day. Lo Chen. The earliest evidence of the Lo Chen traces to the 1400s in Germany and Holland. Besides written references, the breed can be found in artwork dating back to medieval times. The Lochen has enjoyed popularity for many centuries as a companion dog of the ruling and middle class alike. They got their name from their trim, not for possessing a fierce lion-like personality. Lochen are small, happy, and lively dogs who love to be a part of their owner's lives. This is Lochen number 11. I can never quite understand why you have the Lochen in, in the toy group, in the non-sporting group in the States, because we have them as toys, as indeed we do with, with the Bichons. <laughs> Because they're, you know, they are essentially toy dogs. I'm sure there's some, there's some there's very some valid reason in the in, <laughs> in the history of the breed, Gina. We're going to have to that look that up. can be a little research for you there. We're going to look that up. Bichon Frise. The Bichon Frise is one of many breeds originating from the Mediterranean area. They are a small, sturdy, white powder puff of a dog, possessing a merry temperament and an inquisitive expression. Bichons are dogs of great appeal and throughout the centuries were favored pets of royalty in various European countries. 
This is Bichon Frise, number 15. Relatives of mine have four Bichons. They are a hoot. This is the number yeah, one Bichon Frise in the country, the number three non-sporting dog with 20 best in shows to date. And don't I remember Scott Summer going best in show at Westminster some years ago? Yes, with, with, JR. with the Bichon, the, the Bichon famous JR. That's right. Lhasa Apso. The heavily coated Lhasa Apso has its origins in Tibet, a country of huge mountains and deep valleys with intense cold and heat. Lhasa Apsos were kept as special guards inside of monasteries and dwellings because of their intelligence, acute hearing, and uncanny ability to, to distinguish friend from foe. This is Lhasa Apso number 23. This, calf weighs great. this is Gabriel, who's been rated in the top 10 of the breed. Thank you, ma'am. Right on around for me, please. This breed acted as sentinels in Tibet. Yeah, they're uh, the, like so many of the, the Asian breeds. They have a certain aloofness mm -hmm. about them. But once, once they like you... They're your friend for life. Absolutely. <laughs> Skipper Key. Skipper Keys, whose name means Little Captain in Flemish, were popular companions on canal boats where they served as guardians. The general appearance of Skipper Keys is distinctive due to their black, short, thick-set bodies and fox-like heads. Skips are very fond of children and are devoted to their charges. This is Skipper Key number 11. This is Smokey. This is a very energetic, cobby little breed. They have a very interesting coat pattern, right? While they're all black, their hair in different places is different shapes, different, I mean, different sizes, different textures. Thank you, right on around for me, please. And of course, we also have cream skip case. We don't. You don't, you don't recognize, <laughs> black, you don't recognize, yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't yeah. recognize the cream, I know. Congratulations. Tibetan Spaniel. Today. The Tibetan Spaniel has existed for thousands of years in Tibet and China and holds an important position in Tibetan culture. Tibbies are intelligent and loving. They are not lap dogs, even though they are small. They are brave watchdogs and like to take walks and play. Tibetan Spaniels get along well with other animals, especially other dogs. This is Tibetan Spaniel number eight. You know, dog people are very versatile, aren't they, Gina? This young man handling the Tibet the Spaniel. I spent last Saturday watching him judge a boxer specialty in the middle of England. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He, he, he shows a lot of different breeds. Uh, box, boxers are his boxers, first love. He was, his, his parents yeah, had boxers funny. many yeah. years ago in Argentina. And he did a jolly good job, too, I might say. But Tibetan Spaniels, one of his breeds, he also shows Tibetan Mastiffs, mm -hmm. I think. So. Absolutely. Caton de Tulia. The breed originated on the island of Madagascar and was owned only by noblemen. Catons are small, sweet dogs with a lot of heart. They thrive on human companionship and make loyal family pets. They get along well with children as well as other dogs. Their long cotton-like coat requires regular brushing. This is Caton de Tulia, number 23. Saw that registered name, including incredible hunk, a hunk, shortened to hunky. And an American champion won that title at the tender age of eight months. Shown tonight by Ernesto Lara. Another, another Westminster Best in Show winner. Yes, with the Afton Pincher. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new breed for us at AKC this Cotone, year. Caconde Tillia, yeah, the, the coat texture of this breed is very, very important. Thank I mean, it's, so it's a big part of its name. And, and, and it should be cotton-like. Absolutely, yes, yes. yes. The, you know, the very, very distinctive coat. Slightly different outline from a lot of breeds that, that, that are generally of that shape. Good and pigment. Always white. Mm. Always white. In always our white. It, yes. Always white. Even in the UK. Even in the UK? Even in the UK? Just yep. checking. <laughs> French Bulldog. 
Bred principally as pets and companions, French Bulldogs are remarkably intelligent and make good watchdogs. They have distinctive bad ears, a feature that accentuates the individuality of this breed. As a rule, Frenchies are affectionate, playful, and sweet-tempered. This is French Bulldog number six. This is Frida, the number one French Bulldog female. Has over 21 group firsts. These, you know, this is such a cute breed, and they are clowns. They have so much character. So much personality. They're small dogs, but huge, huge characters. They can be stubborn, they can be get entertaining, they can be clowns, they can be guard dogs. And they thank can you so much. They're they're I mean, they really are. They're all, all things to all men, Frenchies. Mm -hmm. And the people who have them, once they have French bulldogs, they never, ever, mm -hmm. they never desert the breed. They are super popular. Absolutely. Frenchies for life. Totally. Congratulations <laughs> on your win today. How nice. Hi, sweet girl. Boston yeah. Terrier. Boston Terriers are one of the few breeds to originate in the United States. The prominent markings of this breed are a distinctive feature, and Bostons are lovingly referred to as Tuxedo Dog. They have a characteristically gentle disposition that won them the name of American Gentleman. Bostons are lively, highly intelligent companions. This is Boston Terrier number 42. Well, the one they call Giggles has his <laughs> serious face on right now. <laughs> That's an adorable name. That's Giggles. Yeah, this is the first American breed to be recognized by the American Kennel Club back in 1893. They are fabulous, fabulous breed. And such a smart breed. Mm -hmm. Such a smart breed. And I mean, still, I think that you know, the obviously America, <laughs> this, this is where the breed originated and probably where we you still find the best best mm -hmm. postons, I think. Bulldog. The Bulldog of today represents over a century of dedicated breeding. Originally used in connection with bull baiting, Bulldogs faced extinction in the 1800s when dog fighting as a sport became illegal in England. To preserve the breed, it was necessary to breed out aggressiveness while retaining the courage and tenacity so much admired in this breed. This is Bulldog number 19. And this is the final competitor of the evening in the non-sporting group, the Bulldog, named Don Juan. He's the number one Bulldog all, Bulldog all Systems in the United States. Two best in shows this year. You know, when I first came to the States to judge Bulldogs, I was so impressed by the <laughs> fact that you allowed Bulldogs to go on the ramp. <laughs> because at home when you do 200 Bulldogs, your back is solid. Rest. You can't move for a week. But get this. Croft's Dog Show in March this year. For the first time ever, the Bulldog Ring are having the ramp trial. You see what you Americans do, <laughs> we do in us. 10 I years' love time. That. <laughs> well, this is new for us that we're seeing them, you know, re relatively new seeing the ramp used in the group rings. It's very, very practical. It's a great help to the exhibitors. Absolutely. It's, it's a great help to the judges. And I love the way the dogs just rush They're up so to get well on it. They're so now to get up on the ramp. See, Don Juan just got a little air there. I think he was showing off for the ladies. <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs> Elaine's doing this very thoughtfully. Yeah. I know she's thrilled to do this assignment. Oh, and as she, uh, as she should Dalmatian be. Out, please. Oh, first, we're pulling out the Dalmatian. Standard poodle, please. There's the Dalmatian, the standard poodle the keys, coming please. out, the Kazon. She's pulling out some good ones. Mm -hmm. May I have the Bichon, please? The Bichon. May I have the Tibetan Spaniel, please? The, the French Spaniel. Bulldog Spaniel and, the French and the Bulldog. And the Bulldog. That's a, that's a neat shortlist. Ooh, no. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I'm, I must <laughs> not get as stupid as I did in the World Challenge over the standard poodle. I must exert some self-control. <laughs> must be non-partisan. I know he's <laughs> living in Peru now, but we still think of him as precious. I mean, Mike Scott has had some fabulous Dalmatians mm -hmm. over the years, hasn't he? Yes. And there's Ricky, the, the standard poodle. He lives um, He lives in the family of Sarpe, you know. There's the Down in Peru. The Kazon, the Dutch barge dog, with the very distinctive spectacles. Mm -hmm. The Bichon Frise. Look at those round, big black eyes. That's mm -hmm. And the, the Tibetan Spaniel. 
with Diego. Not in there with the boxer, but with mm -hmm. one of his Tibetan breeds on the, the Frenchie, the fawn Frenchie. She's got a wonderful expression, yeah. that bitch, is not she? And the British Bulldog. The Bulldog. The <laughs> Bulldog, yes, yes. No, I wonder where the Elaine's number one bulldog. going. Oh, God, I think she's... Oh, she's I think. Decided. I think. How do you like us doing 4-3-2-1 this year? Well, you know, it's against now, all Judge the rules. Lesson we are will announce to do it, fourth but you know, I, I'm place. used to do it in Scandinavia. We begin I with think fourth it makes place. it exciting, don't you? Yes, yes. May I please have the keys? Congratulations to you. What a lovely win. Thank you. Congratulations. For group three, ma three may I please have the French Bulldog? Thank you. For group two tonight, may I please have the Tibetan Spaniel? And what a pleasure to award group one to our standard poodle. Oh, oh there we go. Oh. Ricky did it again. OMG. <laughs> Ricky the standard poodle, the English bred, half Spanish bred, now living in Peru. International man of mystery. <laughs> oh, boy, what a fantastic win. Well, doesn't that standard poodle look like a jet setter oh, all absolutely, around the world? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, since he's been, he, he, he actually went with his new owner, Ilaria Bondi, from the Poodle Club of America. Mm -hmm. He was shown at the Poodle Club of America. He's won several best in shows since he's been in Peru. And... Um, well, this, this, is, this is amazing. I mean, he won the World Challenge last year. And now he's the winner of and the non-sporting group. He's won the non-sporting group. It's, it's very exciting. There are going to be a couple of very excited breeders back home <laughs> in Blackpool. Well, the standard poodle winning here in the non-sporting group. Back to talk more about it in Orlando in a moment. <laughs> 